Welcome back, everybody. We're talking about your pocketbook. How many of you know what a real budget looks like? Like, I don't, I don't mean like you just kind of think about something, but you have it written down, and you know what a real budget looks like. Okay. A few of you. Uh, please welcome back financial expert Manisha Thacker. Manisha, uh, it is all about the 50, 30, 20. Mm -hmm. And most people have no idea about kind of what you describe yeah. as a food pyramid for your money. Exactly. It's, it's like people tell you spend responsibly, but they don't tell you what that looks like. So the best rule of thumb I've ever seen comes from Elizabeth Warren, the Elizabeth Warren from the uh -huh. Consumer Protection um, Bureau. She says 50% of your take home pay should go to the stuff you need. 30% to the stuff you want, and 20% is what goes towards savings or investments. Yeah. And if you can keep that framework in mind, 50, 30, 20, that really can help you see where you might need to pare back. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of us don't know much about math, and we don't know how to do the 50, 30, 20. Well, I mean, I mean, no, like, and that's I mean, what, is, well, now what would 20% of that actually yeah. look like and be? But I, that's really where all this starts with the budget, right. is pencil to paper, the right. reality of what right. you need, the reality of what is frivolous spending and what you can do without, and the reality of what you should put away. Now, when you talk mm -hmm. about investments the hard part for a lot of people especially since the economic mm -hmm. crash is what to invest in yeah. and we have one of our audience members mm -hmm. over here has a question on that hello there ma'am good morning Deborah thank you very much I have a question of I'm on Social Security and I would like to find out how can I invest my money or find something to invest in that Social Security will not uh, penalize my check so here, this is an interesting question. Um, the one foolproof thing that you can invest in that will give you a guaranteed return with no penalty is paying down any debt that you might have. Because if you have any debt, credit card debt, any kind yeah, of debt. She's, she's, not, she's, she's like, going, no, you, not do me. Do you have no debt? You but have no debt? For anyone. Yeah, she has no debt. Okay. Good so, for you. I think that. Right. Yeah. But sure, the seniors were hit the hardest. Yeah. I think a lot yeah. of them were hit the hardest when the, when the stock market crashed because a lot of times they had right. investments in things. And we're looking at what's coming in the future. They may be punished even more with services being taken away. So we always say invest, invest, invest. But what does she what do? What do you invest in? So I like target date retirement funds. Um, that's a nice kind of financial smoothie. It's a mix of stocks and bonds and cash. Another thing that you can do, we talked a little bit earlier about CDs, but another way... Um, that you can invest. Do you still have a mortgage? No. No mortgage. Wow. Okay, you are amazing. Oh, You're like a no debt, no mortgage. Okay, so then you can take some risk. And so a, a moderate mix of stocks and bonds over the long run, buying and holding, might be appropriate for you. Um, the one thing I'd caution Betty is if, if you need to spend that money in the next one to five years, you don't want to take any investment risk with it. That's money that you're going to want to follow the advice we talked about earlier. Go to Best Cash Cow, go to Bankrate.com, and take a look for certificates of deposit at FDIC insured institutions. Yeah. Put it under the mattress. That way you know you got it. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so back to the budget. Uh, and I, I talked about, you know, people don't really realize what they spend that's frivolous oh, yeah. spending. And so uh, how to track your money. Give us an idea of how to really start and sit down there. Which, you know, a lot of us with the bank statements that, that come yeah. today for the first time, instead of flipping through old checks, you can go down the list and go, wow. Oh, oh my gosh. Wow. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's all the dirty laundry. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I really think you said it. It's pencil to paper. I recommend that everyone, if you're trying to get a sense of your ratios, just write down everything you spend money on for a month. At the end of the month, you sit down and you tally it up. To fit, you take a look at your, what income you have coming in, multiply by 0.5. That's what you can afford to spend on needs. Point three is wants. Point two is what you should be saving. And then you can just add up the things that you've spent and compare it. There are fancier things you can use like Mint and Quicken, but there's nothing wrong with pencil and paper to get an initial sense of where you're starting. Yeah, yeah. Well, yesterday I was at the bank, had to do some banky business, and I, I, he gave me my balance, and I went, huh. It's lower than I thought it was, and he, he named the store. He oh. goes, well, there was just one store you were at. And I was like, what? I had to get some shoes. You were helping the economy. <laughs> I was helping the economy. Yes, you're right. Okay, um, dominating your debt. Now, student loans is one of those areas that a lot of people get in trouble because they got the degree, they're out in the, in the work world, and then they kind of forget about it. You can't forget about There's certain things that you cannot forget about, student loans and IRS tax bills. Deborah, it is so true. Those things will chase you to the grave. Even in bankruptcy, less than 1% of student loans are ever discharged. So the key thing to tell your kids, especially if you've got four of them, is when you have student loans and you graduate and you move out of the house, 
uh, notify your lender immediately. One of the number one reasons um, uh, student loans go into collections is the lender can't find the student. Yeah, and, you there, and there is not upon them to try and track no, you they down. They will not track you. And also on student loans, I know oftentimes they can have just, it's a really low um, payment plan. If you can double that or get it out of the way quickly, uh, increase it. Don't just pay the minimum if you can afford exactly. not to. Credit cards, same thing. Same thing. And the rough rule of thumb is if you have $5,000 or less of credit card debt, add an extra 50 bucks a month, you'll have that debt paid off in three to five years, depending on the interest rate. Up to $10,000 of credit card debt, add an extra $100 a month. Over $10,000, add $150 a month to your minimum payment. And that's your debt repayment plan. You'll have that debt paid down in three to five years. Yeah, and do that earlier rather than later. And then debt is a four-letter word. I cannot emphasize that enough. I mean, our culture taught us that it, it was great. All you need to make sure is you can make the minimum monthly payment. And I think the lesson so many people are learning now is your parents were living the right way, Deborah. Yeah. Um, avoiding debt and pinching pennies. There is some... We should feel proud about that. Yeah, yeah. All right. Well, Manisha, thank you very much for the tips. And you can learn more about Manisha and her tips on taking control of your finances by logging on to our website, greatdayhouston.com.